everyone and welcome back to the Sunny in London YouTube channel. I'm Sunny and this is a Florida girl's guide to finding sun and fun in London. Actually today's video is not very fun. It's, it's very serious. Today's video is very serious. Not really. I, I just really I wanted an excuse to wear these hats and borrow them from my friends at the Met Police. So yeah we're gonna come up with some kind of tips. And, no really. I have some tips for you whether you're visiting or living in London that are pretty important. Let's start with tip number one. Tip number one is actually for Americans who are visiting London. You need to know if you have to call emergency services while you're in London, you dial 999. That's the equivalent to 911 in America. So whether or not you bought a data package for your cell phone or you're gonna use a UK SIM card when you get here, just make sure in your head you know that if anything should happen, 999 is the number that you want to call. This brings us to tip number two, which also involves mobile phone use. And yeah, Londoners, I'm really talking to you. It took me, actually, I'm, I'm going to get a little loud here. I'm going to get a little loud, make sure everybody's listening, and change it up a bit. It took me a whole five minutes outside three different tube stations to get examples on camera of people using their phones wrong in London. Watch. It's pretty common for people as soon as they walk out of a station to check their phone, whether that's to check their messages, check for directions, or check for Pokemon. People whip out their phones as soon as they walk out of the station. Now, if you're a criminal who wants to steal somebody's phone, it's pretty easy to stand outside some of the more popular stations like Westminster or Oxford Circus, which is a popular place for tourists to be, who are generally delirious and confused. You stand outside the station and it's very easy just to rip somebody's mobile phone right out of their hand and run down the street. So Londoners, visitors, please be careful with how you use your mobile phone in the street. For example, I don't always know where I'm going when I get outside of a tube station, so instead of pulling out my phone, go into some kind of coffee shop and check directions there. At the very least, go and stand with your back against a building and use your phone there. Then at least you have a better view of what's around you because you can kind of see right to left and somebody's not gonna run up from behind you. If you don't believe me, it's real easy after you've watched my video to do a quick search on YouTube of mobile phone theft in the streets of London. It's pretty simple to find a video of some poor guy having his phone ripped right out of his hand as he's walking down the street talking to whoever. Now number three goes specifically to the ladies. If you're traveling at night on the underground by yourself, sit in the front seat of the first carriage if it's available. British Transport Police is going to tell you any seat on any carriage is just as safe as the others. I'm not going to argue with them but what I will say is I personally feel safer in that front carriage because if something dodgy happens at least I know I can start screaming or bang on the door hopefully the driver will hear me tip number four is gonna sound kind of funny and that is beware of hugger muggers yeah if you've never heard that term before let me explain it a hugger mugger is somebody who stands outside a pub and watches for people who are visibly drunk yeah you Americans you tend to have one two maybe three too many when you're here and you don't quite know how strong the beer is uh, you get a little drunk when you walk outside some random hugger mugger might come up to you and say hey hey mate you know whatever and grab you and give you a hug you're thinking British people are so nice and you've just had all your stuff stolen let's not forget that pickpockets have a long-standing history of being really good at what they do in this country they will target you especially when you're drunk now some things you can do to avoid accidents like this or putting yourself in a bad situation keep your wallet on an inside pocket in your jacket and just you know what don't be stupid you're gonna like tip number five in fact tip number five is the whole reason why I did this video and that is beware of people impersonating cops not not ones that just look like you know hot strippers like me <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Yeah, not ones that look like hot strippers like me. Anyways, in all seriousness, be aware that there are people out there who, well, they probably have hats that maybe fit. Actually, they probably don't. Be aware of people who impersonate cops. 
Uh, something you need to know is a real London Met Police officer must carry what's called a warrant card on his or her person at all times. So I'll, I'll show you a little example of one of those that I'll pull off the internet somewhere and don't ever be afraid if somebody approaches you in the street claiming they're a Met Police officer because chances are if they approach you they're going to be in plain clothes because they can't get, well they're not as cool as I am and have friends in the Met Police, but they can't get hats or you know the full Bobby uniform like you know the iconic uniform that you see I was gonna say in movies, but like you actually, well, what they wear. Most people who are impersonating cops can't get those. Like actually nearly none of them can. So somebody might come up to you in plain clothes, pretending to be a cop, ask him or her to see the warrant card because that's their identification. They have to have it all the time and they'll probably be pretty proud to show it to you. Yeah, so that's something you, you wanna be aware of. There are people out there who will impersonate cops and you know, try to take advantage of you, which, you know, would suck. Number six goes again to the ladies, and I'll be honest, as soon as I learned this tip, it not only kept me safer, but it actually saved me money. I'm not kidding. And that is when you are purchasing a handbag, make sure you purchase one that zips close. Not just a snap, and definitely not one that's completely open, so pickpockets, you know, when you're in a crowded tube, can just shove their hand right in it and take all your stuff. Um, make sure you have a handbag that zips close. Now, how did this save me money? When I go into Michael Kors and there's like a sea of purses I want to buy, I can eliminate them immediately and only look at the ones that have like some kind of way to close entirely. Yeah, so same for you girls who are trying to figure out, you know, what handbags to bring on your trip to London. Pick the ones that actually like fold clothes or zip or, yeah, you get the point. Now, <laughs> something really stupid really stupid is look at the other side of this bag what a jackass yeah um i uh, i bought this bag before i moved to london i love this bag but uh it doesn't work out so well if you're walking down the street with a bag like this because it's just kind of screaming that you think you have money which i don't so i you know why send that message to, to possible criminals so if you have a bag with some big old logo like this um you could do what i do and that's you know i, I carry this bag when i'm except for when i'm in you know in chelsea and like king's road or you know somewhere really posh and then i like pretend that i'm something and carry it around like that but most of the time when you see see me uh, I have the bag like this because you know why advertise that you may have even more expensive things inside your purse yeah so I, I don't want to say that I don't like Gucci because if Gucci sent me some bags you know that had maybe a little bit more indiscreet of a logo I, I will proudly wear them and put them on my blog but you know anyways point point being is you know don't don't this you, you should leave this one really at home or carry it the other way um, because you're just telling people to take your stuff. Now we're at our last tip, number seven, uh, which is really, really, really important. And that is these things cost like six or seven pounds, maybe 10. And this is a handheld panic alarm. And I always have this in my purse. Uh, it's not the smartest panic alarm to have because as you can see, it looks like a USB stick. And uh, I'll come back to that. I would suggest and you can find all kinds of different shapes. I would suggest maybe that you get, um, you know, something like this. So it's a little bit thicker in your purse, but you know, when I leave the tube at night, what I do is I kind of wrap this around here like that and, you know, have this in one hand and my keys in the other. So, you know, if somebody approaches me, I can just pull this and it is really loud. How do I know this? Yeah, that's why I wouldn't recommend necessarily one exactly like this because thinking it was a USB stick once, when I had started a new job in the office, I accidentally pulled this too hard. So it made quite the impression on everybody there. Needless to say, I found out it does work. But uh, the final tip is, you know, it's, it's a pretty good idea to invest in a small handheld panic alarm. Yeah, so that brings us to what could be the end of the video. It's the last tip I have. Uh, I, really, I really don't want to press stop on the record because I think it's really cool to see myself in this hat. <laughs> It probably doesn't fit, but um, yeah, it was, speaking of that, I want to thank my friends, seriously, at the London Met Police who let me borrow all these hats. You know, the more I look at it, maybe I will do like, you know, the stripper thing uh, for Halloween and, you know, right at least, you know, 
for Halloween. And well, that'd be a good video now, wouldn't it? <laughs> it's not one I'd ever put on YouTube. Anyways, thanks for watching. And, uh, you know, of course you can find me on Twitter and Facebook and Snapchat and Instagram and Pinterest and I'm, I'm on all of them. If you uh, live in London, if you could share these tips, well, that'd be great. If you're visiting London, I hope this was useful. In any case, it would be really great if you shared these safety tips with people. So yeah, that, that, that's it. Um, and you know, the biggest thing besides thanking the Met Police for their help today is um, thank you for watching. Don't forget I have a blog, uh, sunnyinlondon.com, that I regularly share tips for great restaurants, events, attractions, how to save money in London, you know, hotels and things to do that might be worth, you know, checking out too. I have a newsletter there. Stay safe and thank you for watching.